Good day, my friends, and welcome to another exciting episode of the Daily Torah Broadcast, a ministry of the Messianic Discipleship Institute. Remember, you can always visit us online at mymdi.org and download previous episodes of the Daily Torah Podcast. If you're not a Daily Torah channel subscriber, click the subscribe button so you never miss a single episode. Today, we continue our special Daily Torah series on God's plan for humanity, leading up to the fall holy days and ending with the beginning of the new Torah cycle that begins after the last great day of the Feast of Tabernacles. So my friends, enjoy this series and have a blessed holy day season. Hey, my friends, welcome to the Daily Torah Broadcast, a ministry of the Messianic Discipleship Institute. Remember, you can always visit us online at mymdi.org. Today we are in part eight of our series on God's plan for humanity, and I pray you have been enjoying this series and are gleaning good fruit from it. We serve such a loving God. He cares for us so much and is looking forward to spending eternity with us as one big family. Does that excite you? It should. It does me. That's what drives me to get these messages out to you because I know how distracting life can be. In yesterday's episode, we discussed that the Passover, or Pesach as it's called in Hebrew, is the second holy day listed in Leviticus 23. Notice this in Leviticus 23, 5, it says, In the first month, on the 14th day of the month, in the evening, is the Lord's Passover. The month of Nisan, also called Abib, is the beginning of God's holy day calendar. Occurring in the spring of the year, it starts on the new moon, which is called the Rosh Kadesh in Hebrew, when the first barley shoots come forth. Let's read the whole account so you can see the instructions God gave to the Israelites before leading them out of Egypt. And then we can begin to see how Jesus, Yeshua, the Messiah, fulfilled this during his life and through his crucifixion and resurrection. He says in in Exodus uh, chapter 12, let's start in verse 2. So Exodus 12, verse 2, it says, this month shall be to you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. And he says, Speak to all the congregation of Israel, saying, On the tenth day of this month, they shall take to them every man a lamb, according to their father's houses, a lamb for a household. And if the household be too little for a lamb, then he and his neighbor next to his house shall take one according to the number of the souls." According to what everyone can eat, you shall make your count for the lamb. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male, a year old. You shall take it from the sheep or from the goats, and you shall keep it until the 14th day of the same month, and the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it at evening. They shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and on the lintel on the houses in which they shall eat it. They shall eat the flesh in the night, roasted with fire and with unleavened bread, or matzah, as it's called in Hebrew. They shall eat it with bitter herbs. Don't eat it raw, nor boil it at all with water, but roasted with fire, with its heads and its legs and its inner parts. You shall let nothing of it remain until the morning, But that which remains of it until the morning, you shall burn with fire. So you see, my friends, Passover begins the yearly festival season 
and is to be a memorial observed forever. Notice this in Exodus 12, verse 14. It says, This day shall be to you for a memorial, and you shall keep it a feast to the Lord. Throughout your generations, you shall keep it as a feast by an ordinance forever. The Pesach lamb was to be selected on the 10th of the month, one lamb per household, and if the household was too small, then they and their neighbor could eat it together. So Yeshua filled or fulfilled this selection process when he rode the colt into Jerusalem. Remember this story in, in Luke 19? You can turn there if you have your Bibles, but in Luke 19, chapters 30, or verses 35 and 38, it says, And they brought it to Yeshua, the colt, and they threw their garments upon the colt and put Yeshua upon it. And as he was going, they were spreading their garments on the road. And as he was drawing near toward the descent of the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began rejoicing to praise God with a great voice for all of the miracles which they had seen, saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace and heaven and glory in the highest, right? Hosanna, Hosanna. We know that song, right? And so God instructed the Israelites that the Pesach lamb, the Passover lamb, was to be a male without spot or blemish, typifying the very essence of Yeshua. John the Baptist, the immerser, he recognized this as he proclaimed in John 1.21 at the very beginning of his ministry. Remember, he says, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And the Apostle Paul further clarif clarifies this in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 5, verse 7. He says, For indeed Messiah, our Passover, has been sacrificed in our place. So we see this unblemished male lamb perfectly represents Yeshua as the perfect sinless sacrifice for our sins. As the Torah tells us, there can be no atonement or forgiveness of sin without the spilling of blood. Even the first Adam recognized this when God himself sacrificed an animal to make skins for their naked bodies after his and Adam or Eve's sin. So Adam and Eve, when they sinned by taking of the forbidden fruit, it says in Genesis 3.21, it says, The Lord God made coats of skins for Adam and for his wife and clothe them. The first sacrifice was made for Adam and Eve, the spilling of blood. Can you imagine that God probably made Adam put his hands on this as it was killed, and he felt the life drain out of this living being? And it says later in Leviticus uh, chapter 17, verse 11, for the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I have given it to you on the altar to make atonement for your souls, for it is the blood that makes atonement by reason of the life. So this act, enticed by the serpent Satan, cursed be he, foretold what would have to be done in the future to once again restore mankind to God. Notice further in Genesis, it's still in chapter 3 and verses 14 to 15, it says, The Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you above all livestock and above every animal of the field. On your belly you shall go and you shall eat dust all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and her offspring. He will bruise your head 
and you will bruise his heel. Speaking of Yeshua, the future redemptive act of Yeshua. Yeshua further demonstrates this when he proclaims in John, notice this in John chapter 3, verses 14 to 17, Yeshua says, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God didn't send his Son into world, into the world to judge the world, but that world that but that the world should be saved through him. And also, furthermore, in, in John chapter 12, verses 31 and 32, he says, Now is the judgment of this world. And Yeshua is speaking, Now the prince of this world, that's Satan, now the prince of this world will be cast out, and I, if I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. Now Paul confirms this later in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 22. He says, For as in Adam all die, so also in Messiah all will be made alive. So as we see, the Passover, the Pesach, is the most profound day in the history of mankind. Whereas the very creator of mankind has sacrificed himself in our stead for our sins. How awesome a Messiah we have that even while we were still in our sins, Yeshua died for us. The Apostle Paul tells us in the book of Romans, In Romans 5, he says, But God commends his own love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Messiah died for us. That's in Romans 5, verse 8. Well, my friends, that's all the time we have today. But how wonderful is the plan of God. And we're just getting started in this redemptive process. Tomorrow we will talk about the redemptive role of Jesus Yeshua as not only the Lamb of God, but the high priest who was sacrificed in our stead as the Lamb of God. Remember yesterday I said there were so many layers to the Word of God, to the Passover, to the Holy Days, and we just peeled back one layer today. But until then, until tomorrow, Thank you for joining us. Please consider becoming a monthly sponsor, no matter how small. We have free in-depth online classes available, and we're always developing future ones. Email us and let us know you're praying for us. You can donate online at our website at mymdi.org. Click on the Giving Menu button. And don't forget to share this message on your social media and help spread the word. You never know whose heart you're going to touch. So shalom aleichem. Until tomorrow, peace, my friends.